banking services capital markets insurance in short bci that is how you can remember financial inclusion hi guys my name is anuj jindal and today we are going to talk about financial inclusion as per niti aayog's report strategy for india at 75 or in short india at 75 we've already covered a lot of uh, topics under the first a uh, segment of this particular report which was drivers and today we are going to talk about one of the 11 drivers that was financial inclusion so let's move on to the ppt mode where we will be talking about all the aspects of financial inclusion one by one and this is very important for the upcoming rbi examination as you can see here uh, the financial inclusion as i said includes or it can be learned very easily by using or remembering this acronym bci wherein b is equal to banking sector banking services c is capital markets and i is insurance c is capital markets and i is insurance what does it mean uh, actually let me explain it to you very briefly in case you have no idea about what financial inclusion is now one aspect of financial inclusion is banking services which means a person let's imply that you are a person who has no uh, banking services no access to banking services no access to bank no access to capital markets no access to insurance now when you're provided access to banking services that means you have access to make deposits in the bank you have access to take credit from the bank in case you need anything you have the access to create fd or saving instruments you have the access to indulge in rd or recurring deposit other kinds of instruments and a lot of other facilities are also made available if you are a businessman so you can go for a current account and uh, enhance your business or develop your business faster so banking providing banking services uh, to the unbanked to the unbanked and uh, in the unbanked areas and also to the people who are not provided these banking services becomes a part of financial inclusion that automatically makes you a part of the entire financial economy of the country the second one is capital markets so what is the importance of capital markets let's say you are a business and you don't want to go to the bank in order to take some money in order to borrow some money well you can also go to the uh, you know capital markets in order to do the same thing by borrowing by issuing uh, either debt instruments which are bonds which i'm sure you must be aware about or you can also issue equity in order to do the same thing okay so these are the ways in which you can access the capital markets uh, uh, put a value on your business and get credit similarly if you are a person who wants to invest or save some money instead of going to the bank you can also go to the capital markets and invest in uh, thousands and millions of companies like this who are uh, interested in borrowing from you okay so that way you can save by investing in them and you can have higher earnings and the third aspect of financial inclusion is insurance which provides security so insurance and social security which also results in asset diversification this means a person is considered to be financially included when he has access to insurance services that means he is secured socially and financially you can go for financial uh, insurance you can go for a social insurance you can go for a life insurance you can go, to, go for a health insurance there are multiple hundreds of types of insurance instruments which can be accessed so it is normally believed that you, if you have access to these three services then you are financially included in the true sense having understood the meaning of financial inclusion let's undergo or understand the current situation with some data as well this is a list of uh, major schemes which have been launched in order to improve or enhance financial inclusion in the country jan dhan yojana related with opening more accounts mudra yojana related with providing loans uh, startup india stand up india startup india both of them Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bima Yojana related with life insurance, Suraksha Bima Yojana related with general insurance, Atal Pension Yojana related with social security. Okay, as you can see, uh, all of these are connected with all three areas: banking services, 
you have capital markets and you have insurance being covered from the third aspect okay so i hope you have understood that uh, the schemes are also going in the same direction now a small fact to explain to you or to help you understand the impact of chandhan yojana and the impact of banking enhanced banking services in 2014 percent of adults in india had uh, bank accounts whereas after janthan yojana in 2017 although it has increased a lot more this is the data being provided by niti ayog 80 percent of adults have access to bank accounts now and the homework for you or the question that i would be putting forward to you is presently what is that number what is the percentage of adults who have access to bank accounts or who have bank accounts uh, you can easily find that out from the website of Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana. Okay, so this is the fact which is important. And another important uh, thing that you need to uh, understand is use of mobile payments in India. Although demonetization was not focused upon uh, improving or enhancing digital transactions, but it accidentally did. And uh, this fact, this particular chart here will e explain to you how important was it. So percentage of population using mobile money services in India in the year 2016 was much below Pakistan countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, Kenya and Tanzania, which are all developing nations and considered to be uh, not so good when it comes to development. And in India, it was just 1%, whereas in countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan, Kenya and Tanzania, it was as high as 81%. So percentage of population using mobile money services and this has enhanced by leaps and bounds. Another question which can be asked and which I'm posting here, you're supposed to find the answer. You can provide the answer in the comment section below. The question is, what is the percentage of population using mobile money services since demonetization? How, uh, what has been the increase and what is the total percentage of Indian population uh, using mobile money services? Similarly, another data that shows that India is not doing so well when it comes to financial inclusion is number of loan accounts per 1000 adults. It stands at 154 as on 2016 and uh, in Bangladesh and Pakistan, although it's low, but in South Africa, you can see it's as high as 40417 and in Kenya also 231. And these are the economies. These are the countries which are not doing so well. So it's surprising that India is even lacking behind these kind of nations. Okay. And uh, another fact uh, before going forward, bank credit to GDP ratio in India. Remember this very important data. You can use it in the interview or also in the essay bank credit to GDP ratio is 51% in India, but it is as high as 98% in china so this is something really important that you need to remember 98 percent in china and only 51 percent in india this fact is also uh, also belongs to 2016 provided by niti Ayo. okay now having understood the present situation both the goods and the bads let's come to the constraints what are the reasons that financial inclusion has not been able to pick up in the past number one financial literacy lack of financial literacy and the future uh, you know, way forward that has been provided by Niti Ayog, which we'll be discussing uh, in a minute, is that banking correspondence and niche banks like payments banks, postal banks, small finance banks, these are the ways in which financial literacy can be enhanced in the country. What do you mean by financial literacy? Financial literacy means awareness among the people uh, as to uh, availability of different banking and financial instruments and access for example uh, because of marketing because of government's push a lot of young people are now getting into mutual fund market right you also might have invested in the mutual fund market i certainly do on a regular basis but our parents still feel that it's best to invest or best to save uh, by putting your money in a fixed deposit by going to the bank because they think that it's completely safe so that's how you go about it but we believe the young generation believes in no, not keeping all our eggs in the same basket, but diversifying by taking certain risks at the same time, keeping some safe investments as well. 
Okay, so that is an aspect of financial literacy to make you understand it. Costly traditional banking operations. So traditional banking operations have been very costly because of lack of digital, lack of digitization and lack of digital transactions. So the country has has still been using uh, non-digital offline transactional methods and the people have also not adopted adapted to the change so fast. Although post demonetization it has increased, but even then the traditional banking operations have been used and they're costly. So that cost is directly transferred to the consumer. And he's the one who loses out in the end. Conservative regulatory approach to new technologies. This means that uh, there is a question on how RBI and other regulators like SEBI are uh, looking at new technologies, new instruments, new methods of banking, new methods of financial inclusion, and whether they are uh, moving fast enough in order to encourage such technologies, such instruments or not. Okay, so these are the three major constraints. Uh, now, let me remind you that these constraints are most Im more important from UPSC point of view, very uh, highly expected question in the future. Why not so important for RBI? Because they're very generic in nature and RBI would instead be focusing on facts like this or schemes like this, or uh, let's say what exactly is financial inclusion, BCI in short, okay? Uh, but constraints, in fact, the constraints which are so analytical in nature, you just need to understand them. You don't have to mug them up. What is the way forward? How to go about uh, bringing a change or improving financial inclusion. Let me explain to you the first one. First is Arthik Shiksha Abhyan. Now this is uh, related uh, with financial literacy. The purpose is to uh, provide uh, financial literacy. Arthik means related with finance. Shiksha means literacy in school. So the purpose is to create or to make financial literacy a part of school curriculum so that people, students can benefit from it and students understand how the financial uh, markets work, how financial inclusion works. Assess the performance of banking correspondents and give better incentives. Again, the purpose is twofold. Number one, financial literacy. Number two, uh, increased access because even now a lot of uh, rural areas do not have access to banking services and it's the banking correspondents which are the nearest point of connection between the people and the bank. Okay. Online and paperless banking, the purpose is comfort. So one major reason which I'd explained in another video, I don't remember which one, I believe the past year analysis that we did was that uh, uh, why is uh, money, why is cash considered or uh, why, why is cash still considered irreplaceable? The reason is comfort. It's so easy to use cash. You go out, you don't have any hassle, you just pay back, pay cash and you receive something in return. If you don't have change, it's very easy, it's very convenient. But the same comfort, the same convenience is not available in online and paperless banking. So the purpose or the way forward is to make online and paperless banking so convenient, so easy that it becomes synonymous with cash. And the argument was that U UPI uh, wants to do the same, wants to make uh, you know, online banking synonymous with usage of cash so that in case of using cash, you start believing in using an instrument like UPI. The fourth one is using technology to improve the assessment of credit worthiness for households and informal businesses. The purpose is no red tapism or minimal red tapism so that you can take credit whenever you want from the bank without any uh, requirements of corruption or requirements of any kind of uh, Red tapism, it's fast, it's easy, it's uh, transparent, uh, no red tapism, no corruption involved, okay? Leverage payment banks and other platforms to scale up payment systems in underserved areas. Payment systems in underserved areas, India Post Payments Bank, and another method in order to increase or encourage payment systems is USSD, which does not require any internet. So it does not need any internet and that is how it enhances uh, you know, the usage of payment systems, online payment systems. And the next one is maintaining regulatory framework governing formal financial products. So you have, uh, uh, you know, different kinds of regulatory frameworks and the purpose of these regulatory frameworks should be to check mis-selling in financial products and also to check that whatever financial products are being provided, they are, uh, you know, uh, not defrauding the customers. 
KYC restrictions should be eased in the capital markets so that more and more people can invest in the capital markets and the lock-in period for gold bonds should also be reduced. So these are some of the recommendations. Lock-in period of gold bonds, then you have uh, KYC restrictions, then you have, uh, uh, you know, mis-selling or uh, let's say mis-selling or frauds when it comes to agents involved in financial products. So all these are ways of enhancing or improving uh, financial inclusion in the economy. Uh, well, that was it. Just remember BCI, uh, majority of things are done. In the interview also in RBI especially, they often ask what is financial inclusion and all majority of students, in fact, a lot of students uh, are unable to frame an answer. I hope the Niti Aayog report uh, and analysis will help you understand and structure your idea about financial inclusion okay uh, all the very best take care if you like this video uh, do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon